all right what's up guys we're back again with another little video here uh i'm fixing to tear down this 394 xp and uh figured i'd bring y'all along for the ride i'm gonna do something a little different today i know we normally don't do any filming on working on the saws on my channel but i figured we'd throw a little something on here so we're gonna get started got the 394 here this is my 394 by the way and uh just make sure you can see us good. Slid over this way. Okay. Alrighty. Get started on this tear down. Just gonna get a little port job. And uh then it's going up on the auction block to be sold when it's done. This is a, a running saw the way it is right now. Um but we're gonna tear it down, go through it, make sure that it's it's good to go and, and port it while we're in there. So uh, that's why the saw is being torn down. Okay. Oh, hope everybody's doing well. I'm trying to. If we can beat the rain today, we're out here. The bell hoppers were outside. I know it's kind of an odd spot to be tearing the saw down on the back of the truck, but there's not a lot of table space in the shop right now. And bell hoppers in there working on some lawnmower mandrels. So I decided to come out here where we can actually hear what's going on. And Y'all can hear what's going on. And so that's what we're doing. Eventually I gotta get me a, a shop space set up for the house where I can start doing this from home. I wanna get my my toolbox brought to my, my building and then I can start working on saws at home on my in my building. So that's the goal, but my toolbox weighs about 600 pounds, and I got to find some help to get it <clears throat> moved up to my building from where it is now. I've moved it before by myself, but everybody tells me that I shouldn't do that because doing stuff like that takes a young guy like me and makes him old real fast. And we don't want that, apparently. So, we're trying to avoid having to do that. And help is pretty unreliable these days, as y'all probably know. So, we're uh, hanging up on something here. Decon. There it is, that's what's hanging up on. There it is, finally let loose. It's hanging up on the decomp and a couple of other things. But, uh, yeah. So that's what, what we're doing. Fuel line slipped off here. Probably got to dump gas out of the tank because I didn't do that either. So. Common problem on 394s and 395s is these top cover holes here, here, and here, if you can see it, tend to get stripped out. It was a, a common issue with these saws. Apparently they'd get hot over time if you didn't take your top covers off on 394s and 395s um it, the screws would corrode into the hole or guys would over tighten them and snap them off in the hole but uh that was a common issue just a little information for y'all about these these particular saws that and 394s and 395s were kind of prone for cool problems. 
Um, the coils on these really, for some reason, they tend to go out quicker than most other saws. Um, but then again, 394s and 395s tend to get used more than about most other saws too because these were logging saws. These were good saws for for guys that uh, you know intended on when you bought one of these you intended on using it every day. So that's that could be to blame too. Not just the saws itself, but I just I've just noticed myself that I've seen a lot more of these with bad coils or ignition problems versus like a 372 or a 575, 576 or something of that nature, a 390, 385s. Um, so, but nonetheless, even with the, I mean, nothing was made perfect. They all had little issues and design flaws. Nothing's perfect. No manufacturer makes anything that's perfect. Um, but you just, you take what you get. You either live with it or you don't. You know, that's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. Choke unhook real quick. I know people always ask me to explain certain things when I'm tearing these down or when we're doing saws or whatever. And uh, I don't ever really talk about it much, but so I don't really try to, to bash brands or anything, even though we're more partial to Husqvarna's. That's just our preferred brand, my preferred brand of saw. I do have steels, or I have had steels in the past, and I've worked on a good many steels, and there's some good steel models out there. 044s and uh, 046s, 460s. Um, I haven't personally messed with the 461s, but I've heard they're good saws as well. So uh, they're pretty similar to a 460 from what I understand. So, um, there's that. I don't have anything to fit that out here. I'm kind of limited, limited on my tools because I just brought a handful of things that I normally use to work on these with me today out here. So, we'll just take these two out instead since I don't have one to fit it because apparently it's had a different bolt put in there. But, yeah, we're not brand. I mean, we work on all of them. I do like all of them. Brands from, or models from all brands, but there's there's even some Husqvarna's we don't like, so. Um, yeah, no, nobody makes anything perfect, basically what I'm trying to say. Not every saw is, is good, but it is what it is. You can't have your cake and eat it too. might have got swapped in the wrong place. A lot of times these don't get put back in the right spot, so we may have to go grab it real quick. But I'm gonna go ahead and pop this mount bolt loose at least while I'm waiting. Or while I'm out here. Overall, this saw is not in bad shape. Uh, these top cover holes aren't stripped, which is always a good thing. So, seems to be a solid saw. We're gonna inspect it as we tear it down. When I first got it, I had to uh, I had to go through the carburetor on it. It's a Walbro 
Um, I think it's a it's a WJ39 Wabro standard that comes on these 394s and 395s. Some of these did have Tillys, um, but those are a little bit harder to find. Most of these had Walbros on them though, which is not a bad carburetor. These are good carburetors. Um, but I did have to go through this carburetor when I first got this saw to get it to run. It had trash in it and the diaphragm, the diaphragms weren't oriented right inside the carburetor. Somebody had been in here and had it, uh, somebody had messed with it. So it wasn't, wasn't correct. So it wouldn't get in the correct amount of fuel to run properly but uh it's since squared away now i did have to fix the intake on it because somebody had uh messed with the intake on it and didn't have it on there right either because the the impulse line or the impulse this one doesn't have an impulse line it has an impulse tract right here um that impulse through the uh the intake tract here the the phenolic intake tract. Um, these are phenolic because they're designed to um, keep heat out of the carburetor and keep the carburetor from boiling. So, um, yeah, you definitely don't want carburetor boil. I had a steel one time, it was actually a 046. And on a really hot day, if you were outside running it, you could hear, after you'd shut it off, you could hear the carburetor boiling. Um, they just, none of these saws really like heat. They, they don't, but anyway, we're gonna go grab the um, proper um, Allen here, and then we're gonna come back and snatch this cylinder off. All right, we're back. We got the right tool now. So, yeah, it helps to have the right tools to get the job done. It really does. Kind of hard to do a job without the right tools. But kind of what you deal with when you don't have the proper work environment to do certain things. But nonetheless, we don't let it stop us. We still manage and still get her done. So. That's all we can do. Yep. This 394 needs a weight reduction. It'll just get a Decent little cord job for turning it into a nice work saw. Basically, is what we're going for on this one. So, see if it'll clear. Clear without taking the handle off, which may not, we may have to take the handle off. We're just trying to, looks like we're going to take the handle off, which is not a big deal. I normally take the handles off anyway, but. We're just trying to speed it up a little bit here today. Snatch this handle off real quick, so she'll, she'll come right out. goes to show sometimes it's not good to cut corners. If I had all the right stuff out here, this would be a lot easier.
is off. your screws out of your cylinders because otherwise you'll forget and you'll end up losing them. Ask me how I know that. That's happened before. Don't look too, too bad. Definitely not a new saw, but it's not the worst. Um, we'll get it all squared away and cleaned up and uh, it'll make a nice saw when it's all said and done. But, uh, yep. So what we'll do, we'll get her squared away here. It's got a little bit of wear on the intake side, which is normal. Stuff like that's normal on, on saws like this are old. They got a little bit of time on them, but we'll get her cleaned up, and fixed, and squared away. I might even just put a new piston in it just to be done, just just because I normally do that. And if nothing else, it'll definitely get a set of rings, but probably put a piston in it anyway, just because. When I build one, I want it to last. I don't want it to cause problems or give problems for somebody. So. That's probably what we'll do. But uh, anyway, we're gonna stop you off here and uh, get busy on cleaning some of this up because uh, the weather's not being the most cooperative today. So we're uh, trying to get something accomplished before it gets wet. So before it starts to rain. Appreciate you watching. As always, take care and uh, stay safe. Enjoy.